Hello there, well, we're on one of my local venues again. Um, as you can see from the background and the amount of clothes I'm wearing, we're quite well into the winter. Well, we're quite sort of in the middle of December by now and we've, we've pretty much had a mild autumn. We've had a handful of frosts, a couple of sort of spells of cold winds, but really we haven't really had a lot of bad, bad sort of wintry weather. And the knock-on effect to that is the carp are sort of fed longer through the autumn and they're like, really fat now the massive feeds are sort of over and they're becoming although they're still active they're becoming a little bit hard to get bites from uh, we've run through it in a few other videos of using pop-up rigs and chods and you know hinge rigs call it what you may to get a quick bite but realistically the way i'm reading it in a lot of places now it's you're having to sort of like use minimum amount of bait to try and win a bite. I sort of liken it to, I think it's that Mr. Queer Soap sketch of like the one wafer thin mint for sir. They are stuffed. You're just trying to get a bite really. And it's something I've not seen a great deal of people do lately. Although we all carry it in our bait buckets or bags and that, it's PVA mesh, you don't see a lot of people using like little stick bags and that. I mean, for me it's, um, now I've got one tied up here. It's it's a brilliant way of getting a little bit of attraction out. You, you know, you, you mask the hook with it, so you, you know if there's still a bit of leaf matter on the surface. You're not worried about hooking that as your lead goes through and that. But realistically, it's nice to sort of get a little parcel of attraction around your bait. You know, I mean these stick mix. You could buy stick mixes from different, you know, from your tackle shop, different bait companies and everything. But you can add to them, you can put powders in, liquids in. Uh, realistically, if I had to give you a few tips for it, I'd say don't pack them down too tight. Try and avoid sort of thicker oils. If you're going to use an oil in to, you know, get it to come up in the water to draw fish down, I'd use a really thin one like a nut oil or a really fine quality salmon oil or something. Uh, I tend to try and use liquids that dissipate in the water rather than rise as well. But yeah, don't pack the bags too tight. And I actually, myself, I prefer to use them quite small there. Um, a good tip is, is not to have your hook too near to the knots because when they melt, the knot might end up in the gape of the hook. Obviously, it could cost you a fish. Uh, rig wise, I tend to use a very supple braid. Uh, I don't really complicate too much. I think bag fishing, the fish are likely to come in, they'll have a little suck it, maybe blow out. If they feel something in their mouth that they recognise as not a food source like a hook or something, they're going to try and eject it. So use basically an anti eject type rig, one of my favourite ones, a KD type set up on a mugger, really. Short hook link, as always, with bag fishing. Um, if I'm using it on a rotary setup, I'll just put a big loop, put the loop through the like flexi swivel and then loop it over the bag and pull it tight like that so very simple really obviously if you're using a lead clip on waters where you're not allowed to use lead core or you like lead clips you you know you can use like a quick clip or something or if you're on the water where you're expecting a lot of bites i don't tend to fish them sort of waters so you know i don't really need to be quick changing sort of thing um bag fishing was looked at as being a I don't know, a small fish mesh method, but I've actually caught quite a few big fish on bags. Um, you know, like even on sort of notoriously difficult pit four at Frimley, I caught the biggest one out of there on a little stick bag a few years back. But um, yeah, like I said earlier, there's several ways you can make your bags up. You can use a custom stick mix from your favoured bait company. You could um, use crushed boilies. You can add a few pellets to it. Another tip I'd try and I'd say was try and keep the finer stuff around the hook end so you don't risk getting a bit of boily or something over the hook point. Um, another very popular method, I'm a big fan of it. I've had fish to over 40 pounds on it as well and I, I know Lewis actually likes it and that's just a bag made up of just roughly crushed up bread. Uh, if you play around with it and you don't pack that down too tight, you can actually get it so it's buoyant, so the rig will actually sit up off the bottom before the bait, you know, when the bag bursts, the rig will settle. A bit like using a foam nugget, but then that'll leave a little cloud of bread flake around your hook bait. And uh, another little edge that I've done like a few years ago, and it caught, I put it down to being a major part of catching the Royal 40, was um, I actually. Uh, Obviously we sit around for hours 
plenty of time on the rounds with the rods out so make up a load of stick bags with crushed boilies bit of stick mix bit of pellet and that absolutely loaded with attraction um, it's quite good at this time of year when the flying rats are about you can fire these out like you would boilies and because um, they're a little bit big for the seagulls to grab hold of that you can get a bit of bait in the water pumping out attraction in the winter at Richmond Park it was an edge because there's a lot of diving birds every time they dive on that thinking it's a boilie it just kick out more attraction so basically you know we've all we all carry like a bit of PVA mesh in our like armory I mean I, I, it surprises me that not you see less and less people using it we're all relying on pop-up rigs and that so really I'd give it a go really this winter if you're struggling for bites you know fish are fat just trying to nick a bite really so see how that goes